Welcome to section 32 of the viruses. This is our virus overview figure. In this video, we will be discussing mumps. The mumps story takes place on a dreary day when the parents are gone. Kids are running loose, causing all sorts of mayhem. Before we bring on the rambunctious children, I want to point out the color scheme in this house. Notice how red and warm it is. This red warm color scheme indicates that this is an RNA virus. So now let's bring on the hooligans. Look at this guy. He's getting crayons all over the place. He spilled two piles of them, forming two big bumps. These big bumps of crayons represent mumps. Bumps for mumps. If you look outside the window, you will see dark rain clouds. These dark rain clouds bring a negative, ominous vibe, almost like they are warning us that some crazy crap is about to go down. Well, these negative rain clouds indicate the mumps virus is a negative sense virus. Negative clouds, negative sense. And now look at the stovetop. The frying pan is on. I guess one of the hooligans will be cooking something up. Anyways, the pan represents pancreas. The flames under the pan represent inflammation of the pancreas, or pancreatitis, which often accompanies a mumps infection. Again, flames under the pan for pancreatitis. I guess this kid wasn't cooking food at all. In fact, it looks like he took a pair of crayons from the mumps bumps, or those two crayon balls to the right, and he's just dropping the two crayons right here into the flaming pan. And then obviously, that pair of crayons will melt and mix together. This pair of mixing crayons indicates that mumps is a paramyxovirus. So again, pair of mixing crayons for paramyxovirus. Now this kid took a crayon from the bumps of crayons and started drawing a line on the carpet. That's pretty dang destructive. Not a care in the world, just drawing lines wherever he pleases. Well this line indicates that mumps is a linear virus. So a line drawn with the crayon here stands for linear virus. With the parents gone, these little goobers are finally able to torture the cat and not get in trouble. In the bacteria videos, we used cats to represent catalase positive. The catalase test is not relevant for viruses. It's only for bacteria. So since this video is all about the mumps virus, which is a virus, we are free to use cats however we want. Now look at this kid pulling on the cheeks of this poor guy. This represents big cheeks in patients with mumps. The reason the cheeks get big is because the parotid glands get super inflamed and large. This image shows a poor kid with parotitis from a mumps infection. You can tell his cheeks, specifically his parotid glands, are super inflamed. So this poor cat getting its cheeks stretched out represents parotitis in mumps. Now this kid was trying to help the other kid melting the crayons, but he slipped dropping a pot right smack on his noggin. This direct blow to his head represents meningitis, inflammation of the brain. Plus, he's wearing one of those big, roughly black hats, which we like to use to represent meningitis. Now, meningitis is one of the greatest concerns for mumps, so don't forget this. Now, you may have also noticed that this clumsy pot head kid has stepped onto the mumps bumps, crushing a part of them. Now, these mumps bumps also represent inflammation of the testicles that can occur with mumps. So these big swollen piles of crayons that kind of look like testicles will help you remember that testicles are swollen in mumps. Another name for this is orchitis. Again, big swollen bumps for swollen testicles. The fact that the swollen testicle bumps are being stepped on represents sterility following a mumps infection. In fact, when males present to a doctor for infertility issues, patients are often asked if they ever had mumps as a kid. That is such a relevant question for the physician to ask the patient because mumps can devastate fertility due to orchitis. Again, crushing testicles represents sterility with bumps. Now look at the back of this kid's shirt. It says vaccine free. Apparently this boy, or at least his parents who likely buy his clothes, are staunchly against vaccinating children. Children. It's unfortunate too. After all, meningitis and sterility could really be prevented with a simple vaccine. Now you may have heard of the MMR vaccine. This stands for measles, mumps, and rubella. Mumps is obviously an important part of that trio vaccination. Vaccine-free kid stands for susceptibility to mumps when not vaccinated. Now look at the countertop here. This kid is dinking around in front of the television, watching the news of all things. The news reads, live, mumps outbreak. Also, this kid's holding a needle. I'm not sure why or how we got this needle, but like I said, there's no parents around. Anyways, this needle in front of the live news broadcast television represents the fact that mumps vaccine, the MMR vaccine I referred to earlier, is a live vaccine. So when you're trying to remember if the mumps vaccine is killed or live, just remember this hooligan is watching live news with that needle. Now that we've covered all the elements of the image, Let's do a question to apply what you've learned. A 35-year-old male presents to his family physician complaining that he and his wife have been unable to conceive despite trying for five years. He believes he may be infertile. Upon further questioning, he describes having swollen testicles when he was a kid during a weird illness. The physician suggests the patient's described illness is likely the source of his infertility. Which of the following is most likely true regarding this patient's childhood illness? A. It was caused by an orthomyxovirus. B. He was fully immunized at the time. C. He may have also had parotid gland inflammation. Or D. The infectious agent did not carry its own RNA polymerase. Hopefully you noticed that this man had a mumps virus as a kid. From the patient's history, we learn that he had swollen testicles during that illness, and he is having fertility issues. 
both of which are consistent with a mumps infection. With this in mind, the correct answer is C. He may have also had parotid gland inflammation. Remember the kid pulling on that cat's cheeks making them really big, like parotitis? Now A is wrong because orthomyxovirus refers to influenza, not mumps. Mumps is a paramyxovirus. Remember that pair of mixing crayons? Now B is wrong because immunized children do not typically get mumps. Mumps is covered with the MMR vaccine. And finally, D is wrong because mumps is a negative sense virus. And negative sense viruses do carry their own RNA polymerase. Remember those dark negative rain clouds? And with that, you've learned all you need to know about mumps virus.